first piece of equipment that we're going to talk about is the rucksack. The rucksack will have a piece of loop 550 cord through the top of the frame with a snap link through the 550 cord. The next piece of equipment we'll talk about is the M249 Squad Automatic Weapon and the M240 Bravo. These pieces of equipment are configured the same. You'll have a piece of loop 550 cord through the sling attachment points with snap links on both the M249 and the M240 Bravo. In addition to this, you'll have what's called a tug line, which is nothing more than a piece of 550 cord routed through the front sight post that extends past the barrel 6 to 12 inches with an end of the line bowling that you can fit only four fingers through. You'll use this to connect it to the rope and tug this weapon across as you cross the one rope bridge. The next thing we're going to talk about is the rope bridge team. The rope bridge team consists of six men. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the number one man, which is the far side lifeguard. The far side lifeguard's equipment includes LPU 10s, work vest, his flick will be unzipped and unbuttoned with the swimmer safety line right on the outside connected for the waterborne uniform. In addition to that, he'll also have what's called a knotted hand line. The number one man responsibilities include aiding the number two man in crossing the stream, aiding the number two man in tying the far side anchor point, and then performing life saving operations on the far side once the rope bridge is complete. The next guy I'll talk about is the number two man. The number two man is what's called the rope swimmer. His job, his equipment includes flick as worn with a work vest and his weapon slung. His swimmer safety line will be routed behind him connected onto itself. Once he swims across, the rope will be connected metal to metal contact, and this is how he gets the rope across to the far side anchor point. Once on the far side, the number two man is responsible for tying the far side anchor point, accountability on the far side, and ensuring men are pulling security on the far side. In addition to this, he will also aid the, the people coming across the rope to get off. The next guy we'll talk about is the number three man. He is the near side lifeguard. His job mirrors that of the far side lifeguard, along with his equipment. He has LPU 10s. His weapon and flick will be grounded behind him on a dry piece of ground because he's the first man in the water. In addition to that, he has the knotted hand line and the work vest. He will use the knotted hand line and the work vest to perform life-saving operations utilizing the reach-throw-go method. This means that if somebody falls off the rope and starts floating downstream, he's going to reach for them with the knotted hand line and attempt to rescue them. If that does not work, he will throw the work vest. After he's thrown the work vest, he will enter the water, inflating his LPU tins in order to save that ranger floating down the stream. The next guy we'll talk about is the number four man, which is the rope bridge commander. In every military operation, there's somebody in charge. For a waterborne stream crossing operation, it is the rope bridge commander. His equipment is as worn. The waterborne uniform will also have his flick on for the waterborne uniform, and his swimmer safety line will be routed, just like all the other members of the rope bridge team. He is responsible for ensuring the site construction is properly done, accountability, security, and everything that there is to do with the military operation. The last two men we'll talk about for the rope bridge team is the number five and the number six man, which are your rope pullers. Unlike the number one and number two man, which need to be strong swimmers and somewhat intelligent, the number five and number six man do not need to be intelligent or very strong swimmers, but you need to make sure they are the strongest men in your company or your platoon. These guys are responsible for aiding the number four man in tying the, far, the near side anchor point and pulling all the excess slack out of the rope. And this consists of your rope bridge team. Once the rangers have come up to their stream crossing site, the rope bridge commander will then tell his men to go ahead and get a proper uniform. While his men are getting the proper uniform, the rope bridge commander will identify the near side anchor point and the far side anchor point. After he's identified his near side and far side anchor point, the rope bridge commander will inspect his men to ensure they are in proper uniform. He will then take his 150 foot rope and connect it to the rope swimmer's back, making metal to metal contact. After he's made metal to metal contact, the rope bridge commander will inform the number one man and the number two man to swim upstream and let the current bring him back down to the far side anchor point. Once the number one man and the number two man are on the far side, the number two, one man will aid the number two man in disconnecting the rope and making one round turn around the far side anchor point in a counterclockwise motion and connecting it back to itself. After they've connected the rope back to itself, they will signal back across to the rope bridge commander. The rope bridge commander will begin to pull out the excess slack of the rope. He'll then put the rope under his left arm and get one arm's length away from the near side anchor point. 
At this time, the Robridge Commander will begin tying his transport tightening system with a figure eight slip with bit. Once he's tied his figure eight slip with a bit, he'll connect two snap links, ensuring they have opposing gates. The way that you'll check this is you ensure that the opening gates form an X when you open them. After he's done this, he'll take one round turn in a clockwise motion around the near side anchor point and connect the rope back to itself. After he's connected the rope back to itself, he'll get three to four arms length of rope and then signal back across to the far side anchor point and they'll begin to pull out the excess slack. The far side anchor point will begin pulling out the excess slack and they'll achieve four to six round turns on the far side anchor point starting from top to bottom. Note that when you're doing this in the water, you want to have this anchor point 18 to 24 inches off the top of the water. After they have their four to six round turns, they'll connect the rope back to itself, signal back across to the far side, to the near side anchor point. At this time, the rope bridge commander and the number five and number six man will begin to pull out all the excess slack. The transport tightening system. The way the transport tightening system is used is you have a locked end of the rope, the snap links, two still snap links, and then your free running end acts as a pulley system when the rope bridge commander and the number five and number six man are pulling out all the excess slack of the rope. After they pulled out all the excess slack, the number six man will drop the rope Simultaneously, the number five man and number four man begin making round turns around the near side anchor point. The number six man will come up, ensuring he places both hands on either side of the snap links and begin twisting. The reason he is twisting the rope right here is to take the slack from the rope bridge commander and the number five man so they can work freely with the rest of the rope. The rope bridge commander and the number five man then begin doing three to five round turns in a counterclockwise motion, ensuring they go from top to bottom. Note, once again, ensure that you have this 18 to 24 inches off the top of the water. After they've achieved their three to four round turns, the rubber commander will get a good bite with the rope. He will form a triangle with the near side anchor point, the rope, and his free running again. He will put that bite through that triangle, forming his first quick release, ensuring that it's locked around the near side anchor point. He will then take that bite once again. He will go over the top of the rope, and he will form his second quick release. At the same time, the number five man will be dressing up the rope in a wet weather bag and will tie it to itself on the near side anchor point. After this has happened, the rope bridge commander will come up to the number six man. He will smack the number six man's hand. The number six man will release the rope and the rope bridge commander will snap in to the still snap links on the spine side. This completes your one rope bridge. The next thing we'll talk about is how to properly take the extra rucksacks across the one rope bridge. You will come up. You will hand your swimmer safety line off to the rope bridge commander. He will snap you in and maintain positive control. You will put your trail arm through the lead rucksack strap. The, ruck, the rope bridge commander will then snap in that rucksack and you will tug the rucksack across all the way to the far side anchor point. The next thing we'll talk about is how to properly connect your machine guns to the one rope bridge. When you come up to the one rope bridge, you will hand off your swimmer safety line to the rope bridge commander. He will snap in your swimmer safety line. You will maintain positive control of the rope and hand your weapon off to the Robridge Commander. He will snap in your front snap link. You will move forward so he can put in his rear snap link, ensuring that you have four fingers through the tug line. Once he had you snapped in with your weapon, he will signal you to go across the one rope bridge, tugging your weapon behind you across the one rope bridge. Once you reach the far side anchor point, 
Number two man will aid you in getting off the rope. He'll disconnect your swimmer safety line, and if you have additional equipment, he'll disconnect that equipment. You'll get off the rope, move on into the ground, and start pulling security. After everyone has crossed the rope bridge, the rope bridge commander will disconnect from the snap links. He will tell the near side lifeguard that he is going across the rope bridge. Once the rope bridge commander is 50% across, the near side lifeguard will break down his equipment and put all of his equipment back on. Once the near side lifeguard has his equipment back on, he'll begin disassembling the one rope bridge. He'll begin by pulling out the two quick releases. After he has the quick releases out, he'll maintain good rope management and begin putting the rope back into the wet weather bag. Once the nearside lifeguard has all the round turns out but one, he will signal across the far side anchor point and they will begin disassembling the far side anchor point round turns. Once the far side has all their round turns minus one out, they will signal back across to the, to the nearside lifeguard and he will begin putting the rope back in and pulling the transport tightening system closer to the near side anchor point. He will disconnect the rope from the, near, from the transport tightening system. He will undo that last round turn. Then that near side lifeguard will dress up the rope and he'll snap his swimmer safety line into those two snap links of the transport tightening system. After he has snapped into the two snap links of the transport tightening system, he will send it across to the far side anchor point. They will undo their last round turn and begin pulling him across the stream. Once everybody is across and everything is broken down, everybody will put away their equipment and they'll begin their movement to their mission to complete their objective. Okay, for a few more weeks. Next we will discuss how to do the transport tightening system or your figure eight slip with a bit. You'll have the rope under your left arm and you'll do two twists with the rope. After you've done your two twists and have the bite formed, you will take the free running end of the rope through the bite and get a good forearm's length of rope. After you have that good forearm's length and that bite formed, you'll pinch it off and you'll do another twist with the free running end of rope. You will feed that bite through the free running end and then you'll connect your snap links ensuring you have opposing gates. Once again, ensuring they form that X. And this is your transport tightening system or your figure eight slip with a bit.